that's that kind of Probably. society. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about um, situations of, say, formalized polyamorous marriages or formal, uh, polyamorous relationships? So, for example, this was another thing that was in the news a lot over the summer. Um, that's even something that I know people who are in polyamorous relationships. And uh, is that a thing that maybe doesn't become mainstream but becomes a more viable or socially acceptable option? Um, I think we're not there yet. Uh, in our model, it's a pure relationship between one man and one woman. We have the same sex marriages now, we, that's, but that's still one to one. Um, there's something that would be a very big revolution um, that we would accept your idea that you have a romantic relationship with two partners at the same time. That would, uh, that would be perhaps within a hundred years. <laughs> um, but although you have some um, niches of society where um, there is more tolerance towards having a, an affair, a long-lasting affair. So perhaps it's, it's possible that we start to accept this, but that's not a classic idea of romantic love. It should be one and one. In the case that I know of, it was because of migration. One person was moving a lot between two places and eventually had a relationship in each that the other knew about. And eventually they all moved to one place. And yeah. I don't think it would be mainstream with it. Be no, no. Uh, I know. I know. Uh, a co well, not a, co uh, a trio yeah. of one woman and two men, yeah. and they seem yeah. to get along each other with each other well. But that was some uh, decades ago, twenty years ago. <laughs> I have to uh, <laughs> to question. <laughs> yeah. But my feeling is that. Um, Although I can imagine that tolerance can be extreme, and then, then we, we will not uh, stigmatize these people anymore, but I don't think it will be very mainstream for coming 100 years. Yeah. yeah. You said they are sexualizing women a lot, they're expecting a lot of women to look really beautiful and sexy. But for men, it's quite the same. Mm -hmm. Like men should be tall and broad with a lot of muscles, work their chest, all the little facial creams and hair yeah. creams. <laughs> and everyone yeah. else, if they yeah. invent it for men, yeah. they have to be manly, but like with a hidden female side to be perfect all the time and go to the gym. And and so it's not a one way thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I think you're completely right. I think it's still a bit out of balance. But, but uh, we're in the same uh, Because to sell uh, women's perfumes, you always see like, this yeah. nice guy with no yeah. shirt on. And so they also use men to yeah. and action men and Ken Barbie <laughs> things. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I think it's just very strong for women. But maybe in 20 years, we. Uh, yeah, it will be the same for men, could be. So that. that <laughs> Everything becomes sexualized in the pure relationship. It's not only the female retreat towards the body to have something to hold on. Big words. Yeah. But uh, that's, I think there is kind of parallel with um, the female rush to marriage in the late next century, to be a homemaker, to be a good wife, to be a good mother. That's an extra dimension to it. But if it's the same for men, then, then we're in a different story. So, within 20 years, we might, uh, for my retirement, <laughs> prepare you. Next question. <laughs> no, but I think it's, it's a very good question. Um, like I said, it's hypothetical. If, if, it's, if it's the same for men the coming 10, 20 years, then it's, it's, not, it's not as bad as it's nowadays. I think now it's very imbalanced. I'm not saying it's good, but... Yeah. Who wants to marry? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
we're pretty young to think about it. Okay. Good. Who thinks marriage is necessary? Apart from tax reasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. I think some reinstitutionalization might might be likely. Um, all these negotiations within ten years, I guess we will be having more rules on how to give vis-a-vis step brothers and sisters and, and new daddies and. I guess we're, we're in the midst of the transition, so it might not be a reinstitutionalization towards classic marriage, but something must happen. <laughs> I mean, I guess. No? I don't know. No. Uh, I think everything is always evolving. Yeah. I think as dreaming of a stability, in a way, it's, it's something disillusionary. There's never stability, neither in relationships, neither in population. So, it's evolving. Where it's evolving towards? Depends. I think it was very interesting how you show the evolution of the past 200 years. But thinking about a st stable thing at the end, that I, am, I don't agree. I don't think there are stable situations no, that can okay. evolve to always be imbalanced towards something else. Yeah. So. Well, I'm much more open about the future. What will be the future is much more uncertain. Um. Yeah, but I guess that some reinstitutionalization is well, not not in all aspects of, of marriage, but wow. we're, we're dealing with new situations, and typically what societies then do is to formalize their actions towards the situation. But it will never be a stable situation for 100 years on all aspects. That's, of course, very unlikely. It's not society changes all the time. So but it's not sure that it's a new institutionalization of marriage is necessary. Maybe there will be other aspects of life who will be more institutionalized. For instance, the need to send your children already from your third or the second year of age to a, to a schooling system. The, the, the fact that society imposes more schooling for children at younger ages and so on, that, that's maybe a form of institutionalization of the way we educate our children. Yeah. Not sure. But one point is also there are some, it's not evolving in one direction. Mm -hmm. When you look at the story as you have presented it, it has, you have the impression it's one direction. Mm -hmm. When you look at the 20s, for instance, 1920s, the end of the 20s with the economic crisis, they have a change in the position of women also. You can say that after the First World War, there was more and more egalitarian society, mm -hmm. at least concern, concerning the work or labor uh, possibilities of women. With the 30s, you have the crisis, and one of the solutions for the crisis was send women back home. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the, the mm -hmm. campaigns at that moment in the 30s was women has to be uh, good mothers. And it was only the Second World War was changing the game again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there is always a tension and it can go either way during during this. And, and there is a lot of struggle in yeah. this. This is a, I don't want to do as if this is a logical evolution. I mean, it has to be there are fights on this. You have women's movements. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. the church. It's it's a it's a battle. Yeah, and it has it's a game that has to be played every year, and so on. I I agree. It's very I want clear, li I want <laughs> clear lines. <laughs> sat in your position and you showed figures in the Netherlands that there were Protestants who were more advanced in adopting new standards than Catholics. Yeah, but you have different types of Protestants. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm always yeah. wondering because so, so I know from my own experience that I know a couple who married at 21, they're Protestants. I don't know from any of the Catholics I know that married that early in age. But the, the, uh, the Catholics and the conservative Protestants have the same kind of marriage pattern, which is not age model. They're not forerunners of age model. They're, they lag behind. Yeah. 
So isn't that not more related to secularism than it is to um, Protestant Catholic? Uh, it's it's the the content of the religion and uh, the strictness of religion and the importance attached to uh, paternal authority and to uh, that these are the these ingredients of the religion. It's not only being religious or not, but also specific views in the religion on this on these matters. Um, and my Dutch colleague. Also, Popo, we would, would always claim Catholics and, Protestant, and, and uh, conservative Protestants. Yeah, they always like that. Yeah. As a general <laughs> rule, of course. <laughs> that's, that's the. The danger of talking about Japan, the Netherlands, England. <laughs> <laughs> I do as if I know everything about every period in every country, but that's that's for sure not uh, not correct. <clears throat> okay, and another thing I want to, uh, but then I stop. But uh, I've seen that uh, Jan van Baal was also in the lectures. Um, I think one of the points he he uh, is working on is. Um, the fact that there are many more females going to university than men, and that might change the, the power balance of the couple. So that's, some, that's an important ingredient. Um, but not all of these clever women find a partner. And that's, that's, the, that's a, I think, a very interesting uh, point of view, or a very interesting subject of research. Will the massive graduation of females alter the power balance in the families. And one of the restrictions is that um, the chance to get married differs by education. And for men it's positive, the higher educated more chance to, to, to marry, than for females it's typically not, it's, it's the universe which perhaps not everywhere in the world, but um, so I'm, I'm not that optimistic that this will shift power balances. And women have to become engineers and not nurses to shift their uh, So that's not another issue. But that's something we have to, uh, to keep in mind when we test these kinds of hypotheses. Mm -hmm. Good. But uh, I worked a lot. So I'm going to stop now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you.